Crises don't happen all at once, they happen in waves. So the next wave of the banking crisis, like we've discussed in previous videos, is the collapse of the commercial real estate market. This is because of a few factors, like decreased demand for office space post-pandemic, the Fed's fast, steep interest rate hikes, causing commercial mortgages to become more expensive as they expire and renew every two to five years, unlike most residential mortgages in the US, which span 15 to 30 years. So when these commercial mortgages go into default, the banks will be left holding the bag and they will be forced to sell all those assets on their balance sheet at a loss. Similar to what happened when all the banks collapsed back in March due to runs, and being forced to sell all their treasury bills at losses to liquidate to meet depositors' demand for cash. And although mainstream media has been lying, big surprise, purporting that everything is fine and the banking crisis is over, another bank is failing. First Republic Bank. Shares of First Republic fell sharply and hit a record low Tuesday, as investors questioned how the bank would stabilize itself after losing about 40% of its deposits during the first quarter. First Republic's stock fell more than 40% on Tuesday, extending its year-to-date losses beyond 90%. It hit a record intraday low at $8.27 per share. Also on the consumer front, credit card debt is at record high as the Fed raises rates again. And as we've talked about in this video, you can check out by clicking on the link above. It's seeming more and more every day as if this was all by design. Check out this clip from SEC Chair Gary Gensler's testimony before Congress last week. One final question, and I gotta be honest, uh, I don't know how you're gonna answer it, so I'm kind of excited. Uh, so in 2014, Jared Bernstein published an op-ed in the New York Times titled Dethrone, quote, King Dollar, where Mr. Bernstein advocated for the U.S. government to actively take steps to remove the dollar as the global reserve currency. President Biden has now nominated him to be the head of his Council of Economic Advisors. All while the Chinese are actively undermining the dollar as a global reserve currency and their successes are increasing both in number and at an ever-increasing rate. Do you agree with Mr. Bernstein that the U.S. government should take steps to actively remove the dollar as the global reserve currency? We agree. I really yes, Jared Bernstein, who has advocated to dethrone the king dollar as the world's reserve currency, has been nominated to be head of the President's Council of Economic Advisors. And in more recent news, we've seen some pretty drastic announcements from the political sphere and mainstream media. Here's a tweet summarizing what's happened so far. Susan Rice, gone. BuzzFeed, dead. Vice News, possibly next. CEO of MSNBC, resigned. Don Lemon from CNN, gone. Bongino from Fox, gone. Carlson from Fox, gone. Big shakeups in the media. And to top it all off, Biden makes it official he is running again in 2024. President makes formal announcement to run for a second term. No major Democratic contender has emerged to challenge Biden. When just the other day, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. formally announces, run for president. And just when things couldn't get any weirder, the Democratic National Committee announced they have no plans to hold primary debates because there are simply no other candidates. Well, Democrats rip DNC for not holding 2024 primary debates saying it robs the voters. Also, in response to news that the Democratic National Committee has no plans to host any Democratic Party primary debates in the upcoming election cycle, Twitter owner Elon Musk declared that his platform will support the campaign messages from all 2024 presidential candidates. The billionaire engaged with Twitter users Tuesday who were frustrated with the DNC announcement. He told them Twitter will give each candidate a voice. Something strange is definitely afoot. So instead of arguing about Democrats versus Republicans, we need to accept the fact that the United States has essentially a one-party system. And the ruling party is the business party. Big businesses and corporate cronies buy media to buy elections, to buy politicians, to buy favorable frameworks in order to make a profit. And it all stems from a legal concept called corporate personhood. Mainstream media is all lies. We need to stop consuming all the garbage they put out because it's designed to keep us distracted, divided, poor, dumb, angry, scared, barely alive, and essentially profit centers for big corporations. And one of the main issues that will determine whether or not U.S. citizens are completely and utterly enslaved and controlled by media, the government, and ultimately big business's agenda is if a CBDC or central bank digital currency is created and enforced for all legal transactions in the United States. What's great right now is regardless of your party affiliation, there is anti-CBDC and pro-Bitcoin and pro-crypto policy candidates running on both sides when it comes to both presidential and congressional incumbents. So it's more important than ever for all of us to get politically active and participate in the most important election in modern history. The US banking system seems to be undergoing a systematic collapse all by design to benefit a few at the expense and to the detriment of us all. 
A credit crunch has started, as banks tighten lending by the most on record, Morgan Stanley CIO says, the steepest decline in lending on record in just the last two weeks. It's worse than what happened during the 2008 recession. More Americans are using buy now, pay later services to pay for groceries. And now over 27% of buy now, pay later users do so as bridge loans to survive until their next paycheck. More Americans are now at risk of getting their cars repossessed because with rising interest rates and tightened lending standards, these loans are for over 150% of the actual value of the car at around $20,000 with 18% interest rates, causing the average car payment to be about $730 per month. And the cost to maintain and fix cars over the past year is up 12%. So the average hardworking Americans, the ones who need a car the most to get to work and barely survive, can't afford one and can't get one. Banks are taking away people's access to capital, loans, and lending at an unprecedented rate. All while people are maxing out credit cards, barely surviving on buy now, pay later loans, losing their jobs, and delinquencies across all types of debt are on the rise. All while politicians in our government sold bank shares before the banking crisis started. At least nine members of U.S. Congress sold bank stocks amid turmoil last month. Disclosures show one representative on the House Financial Services Committee sold SVB shares a day before it collapsed. <laughs> we need to ask ourselves some questions. How and why are all the banks across the U.S. being forced to reimburse regulators? Which, by the way, those additional costs get passed down to all of us, their customers and depositors. So, how and why are we being forced to bail out banks that failed, even though it was the government who failed to properly regulate these banks? How and why are politicians in the government profiting more than hedge funds on stock trading? How and why is mainstream media purporting a false narrative of the March banking crisis being over, while we have an absolute tsunami of devastation on the horizon? Historically, leading up to presidential elections, politicians in office want the markets doing well in order to get reelected and stay in office. So, if we follow this same cycle, the Fed should stop hiking interest rates, start decreasing interest rates, and turn the money printer back on sometime this summer. So that by the end of the year, things are on an uptrend because most people decide who they are going to vote for by spring of the election year. That's about a year from now at this point. A new theory in light of all this insanity with Biden announcing he's running for president again, and with mainstream media trying to ignore the fact that other Democratic candidates like Robert Kennedy Jr. are running, who is anti-CBDCs, pro-crypto, and against corporate cronyism, by the way, and with the DNC trying to avoid having Biden debating in the primaries, and with the systematic destruction of the banking system causing it to become more and more centralized in the hands of a few, and with the average American getting poorer and poorer every day, it's possible that things keep getting worse. With the end goal being that a majority of American voters decide to vote Democrat because they need welfare to survive. So Biden stays in for another term, so the global elite's ultimate goal has a better chance of succeeding, that being ushering in a central bank digital currency to effectively enslave us all. I mean, the government, big businesses, and their mainstream media apparatus knows they are quickly losing credibility and people are looking for alternatives. Alternatives to mainstream media, alternatives to the US dollar, alternatives to 9 to 5 jobs, alternatives to politicians currently in power, alternatives to living in the United States at large. And so at this point, the only way they can maintain their power is by forcing us all into using a fiat currency they completely control and program in order to institute a social credit system where if we don't submit and capitulate to their agenda, we lose our money, property, freedom, and basically our ability to live. That's pretty much the only way they can achieve their goal at this point, and they've been actively working on seeing it come to fruition with the institution of the Fed Now payment system, and actually, they are already starting to replace our traditional credit scoring system. This May, buyers with good credit will soon start paying higher mortgage rates. Borrowers with high credit scores will be penalized under the new federal mortgage fee plan. Biden's rule will redistribute high-risk loan costs to homeowners with good credit all while interest rates for mortgages have roughly doubled over the past year. Not only is this socialist and tyrannical, it's a sign that the old credit scoring system is on the way out and a new one is being ushered in. In fact, also last week during SEC Chair Gary Gensler's testimony in front of Congress, he revealed that social credit scoring is pretty much already being used. Check out this clip. Look, I mean, right now you can sweep the data up from your automobile driving. It's called telematics. You can sweep up your social media usage. 
and sort of based upon that, decide how to underwrite and make a loan. There's research actually, interesting research that shows that if you capitalize your letters for, for pronouns and your emails, you're better credit than if you don't. Uh, I'm giving you this away a little bit. And if you charge your phone every night, you're better credit, believe it or not. So now, what if, what if it happens to be the people that capitalize their letters are of a certain race or ethnicity or gender? And it has nothing to do with credit, but then we're embedding something into the systems, uh, which has inherent biases. Um, so yes, I think you're right to have that consideration. Yes, right now, based on intrusive data collection from all of our phones and computers, our new credit scores are taking into consideration how we write emails and if we charge our cell phones every night. Insane. However, circling back to the story about the king ultimately uniting the 13 colonies, history seems to be about to rhyme and repeat itself, and here's how. We are pretty much set up for history to repeat itself, ushering the next American Revolution. Bitcoin adoption is now happening naturally. A quote by Robert Breedlove is, Pain is information. People don't really change their ways or mode of being until there is a reason or motivational force encouraging them to change. So pain is something that puts us all in a new formation. Wherever people are suffering the most, under statism is where they will be most inclined to quickly understand and adopt Bitcoin as a means of necessity. For a while now, in the West before these crazy inflationary times, post-pandemic, when we were getting by not feeling the pressure and pain day in and day out like we are now, Bitcoin. And it's weird, I don't understand it, take it or leave it. While in other countries like Argentina, where they can't trust their banks, can't trust their government, their currencies are inflated into worthlessness. Sound familiar? Bitcoin has become a necessity for survival if they want to eat and stay alive because they were forced to figure out how to store their purchasing power over time. So Bitcoin adoption has become a matter of circumstances. And it's paradoxical in a way because our government is doing more to inspire education about Bitcoin and drive adoption of Bitcoin now than content creators like myself, all by inducing pain. They are actually creating the motivational force for people to learn and move purchasing power into a form of property, the only form of property that cannot be violated, taken, or easily preyed upon like the US dollar, and worse, a central bank digital currency. Here's the deal. The government announcing the enforcement of a central bank digital currency in the United States will be the same as King George III's proclamation that we are to be hanged. So it's possible that what we could not do to unite ourselves, the Federal Reserve will do for us, for either we hang together or we shall surely hang separately.